Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. Bringing you a volcanic uptick update. Wednesday, February 24th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. Clockwork Etna. The sixth paroxysm in seven days is just as spectacular as the rest. Once again, clockwork Etna, six paroxysm in a row in a little more than seven days. The amazing show at Europe's most active volcano goes on following the amazingly regular pattern of paroxysms at almost identical intervals around 35 to 48 hours. The sixth eruption in a row is now in full swing. It seems to follow exactly the same pattern observed during the previous events, accompanied by increasing volcanic tremor, explosive activity from the new southeast crater, began rise slowly this evening and has now developed well into a tall sustained lava fountain reaching 500 to 700 meters of height but still increasing lava flows are traveling from the southeast crater to the southwest and east into the valle de bode overlapping the previous ones and you can watch it live right here so this is the live footage of what's happening at Etna, but we have some spectacular footage we're about to show you, and there's a boom, the sixth paroxysm. And here we have some live video of that amazing show. This is a very heavily populated area, and I think people at this point are getting potentially concerned about the uptick. Now, just as quick as the uptick happens, it could also cease. And there are the lava flows f flowing down the flanks there. And you could see the city below of people probably having a difficult night's sleep, to say the least. Would you want to be buried like Pompeii? Here we see the infrared signal and that flow. And it's a little shaky. It's, I'm getting a little ill here. And then here, the spectacular lava fountaining. Fantastic. So we'll just pause that up. We might come back to it at the end of the video. But let's get back to the stats and some of the other upticks in volcanoes worldwide. Here we see the velocimeter coming from Etna. And this is the, actually the second paroxysm here, the third, the fourth ever larger, and then I predicted that they would be spreading in time because I saw the distance getting further apart, and certainly they did. And then here we're at the sixth, the fifth paroxysm was the most spectacular, and now here we're at the sixth paroxysm, which is ongoing, like a boom. Etna is pushing up on the fifth paroxysm up into the stratospheric uh, ceiling here, and that's what's causing the the clouds there to spread. Here we see the thermals from the sixth paroxysm, and that's definitely a significant lava fountain. Explosive activity continues, Volcanic Ash Center says. To Luis warned of volcanic ash plume that rose to 15,000 feet, altitude or flight level 150, traveling at southeast at 10 knots. Flight level has been raised and is still remaining at red. And we do have some pictures of amazing pictures of how populated this region is and how close this activity is to the people in Sicily. Fantastic footage here of a cathedral and the lava flows in the distance. This is the picture I just showed you a moment ago and some more lava in the backdrop of the city. Absolutely spectacular. I'll leave you links to all this as always. Now let's talk about Reykjanes and Krushevik volcanoes which are on the southwestern tip of Iceland. Earlier today, I had a report over on Oppenheimer Ranch Project on the massive uptick in thousands of quakes. Well, that event has been ongoing, and there is no slowdown. As you can see, I reported on it somewhere right here at around 12 Wednesday, and those quakes have ever been increasing. Now, if we look into the historical information, it seems like an eruption is imminent. Earthquake activity slowed little since the last update. There are no fewer larger er there are now fewer larger earthquakes taking place at the writing of this article. However, 
that has a chance of changing without warning. There seems to be new areas of activity appearing in the automatic Iceland Met Office map, and it's unclear if this is an artifact of the heavy earthquake activity or it's actually the real thing. No one knows for sure as the writing of this article, except there is a quite an unprecedented seismic swarm happening in southwestern Iceland. Currently, there are no signs of magma moving in both volcano systems. That might change without warning if there is a sudden change in activity because of how long it has been since the last eruption took place in both volcanoes. What happens before an eruption is unclear. What is known from around 681 year old historical records that did survive to this day is that earthquake activity increases sharply before an eruption and does so a good while before the eruption happens. The last eruption at Krišuvik was in 1340. The last eruption at Rakianis in 1830. And here we could see quite an uptick. And if this continues, well, we know what happens next. Um, so what we're looking at is at least six, 12 hours of sustained seismicity. And we're going to be keeping a close eye on this. And that's a boom. So... Let's go over the volcanoes with you. Krušuvik is on the southwestern tip there of Iceland. Let's see if we can get this a little closer for you. That's not much help at all. But it's right here on the Rakanis Peninsula. And there is data available for 11 Holocene eruptive events. The last one was in 1340. But the it does only erupt at VEI 1 and 2, so this is a, a more of a minor basaltic flat type of volcano here. Rakanis Ridge could, is a little bit more significant and larger, has an eruptive history of VEI 3 and 4. The last eruption that was significant back in 1830 at VEI 3. So we could be looking at a VEI 3 or 4 coupled with a VEI 2 together wreaking havoc uh, in the Northern Hemisphere's climate this summer if it does go off. Now, another caveat is the Cascadia eruptions during the last 4,000 years here. If we just look at the Dalton minimum eruptions, in California, Mount Lassen was erupting 200 years ago, as well as Mount Shasta during the Dalton minimum, as well as Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Glacier Peak, Mount Baker, so we should be seeing some uptick in the Pacific Northwest down into Northern California in the coming years with what we're seeing and what we've been predicting. Since we started this channel, we've predicted that Iceland would go off first, then Cascadia, and that would be the rollout plan. And we're still sticking with it. We haven't, we stuck to our guns since the beginning, and that's the way it is. But the latest earthquakes near Mount Rainier are ever increasing. During the past 14 days, Mount Rainier has had five quakes above 2 mag and 55 quakes below 2 mag with, for a total of almost, that's 69 quakes near the summit of Mount Rainier in, in the last two weeks. So there is a definite uptick in activity here and maybe a new caldera forming just to the south of the current caldera on Rainier. We could see this a little hole blow out here, but we're keeping a close eye on the Pacific Northwest as well. Volcanoes, they's be exploding as predicted during grand minimas and the magnetic reversal increasing cosmic rays into the subsurface, heating the muons. Well, to make these babies here, silicious rich magmas heat up. The volcanoes on the mid-ocean ridge could be an internal earth heating scenario coming from very deep in the mantle or below, even near the core. So, heads up on that. Hope you got something out of the video. It's definitely a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In the magnetic reversal and grand solar minimum, we have entered and we are deepening into. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons. Each and every one of you that shares this video, you are a hero. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom.